Hey, what's up, builders? It's your girl, Kay Antoinette, the blogger, and you are now listening to the LBF podcast. This week, I have a special creating space with a lovely couple, and we're going to talk Black love. I'm introducing, reintroducing Shalon Splash and Sexy. She had her own creating space, and Mr. Ty of More Than Words, he had his own creating space as well. And these two creatives have been in love for how long? Um, we've been together like a year. A His year. birthday would be a year, January 16th. Wait, y'all got together on the birthday? <laughs> made, made it easy on her. <laughs> so how did that happen? What was that process like? Um, like we've been talking. <laughs> we, it's the shyness for me. <laughs> um... I'm really laughing because I heard, I heard Tyler laughing, but um, we were conversing before that, and um, like some conversations and stuff were had and all that extra stuff. But um, like he said, it was just easier. <laughs> God, gotcha. we, like, decide, we decided know. to make an official date, and um, right. that date was the easiest at that moment. <laughs> it was like we were just sitting there, like. Yeah, we doing this. Like, why so not guess, today? Yeah. I've done Happy that. Happy birthday. And I've done that. <laughs> it's like we've been dealing with each other, so let's just choose any day because we can't remember which day. <laughs> okay. Sound about accurate. So before we get started with like the rest of the questions, um, I want to give you a task of describing your Black love, which is your partner. How would you describe your partner? Anyone, if you can go first. <laughs> exciting. It's exciting. Her black love. I mean, I get something new every day, to be honest with you. you know? And it's always a good thing, though. It's a great excitement. Okay. I like that. You need excitement. You don't want stuff to be boring. <laughs> right? Okay, Shalom, you have to teach me some excitement. Um. <laughs> Let me see. I think I can say the same, but we kind of like we more it's like a balance because mm-hmm. like if I'm always here on a hundred, like he's down here. You know what I'm saying? So we're meeting in the middle. Right. Like so that that balance for me is definitely it. like he brings excitement, but it's more so in a conservative way. Like, you know, I'm going to do this and, you know, it is what it is. Like, right. <laughs> so you, she but brings it, excitement to you and you bring kind of like a calm undertone to her? Just mm-hmm. that part. <clears throat> we mesh well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yin so, and yang. Yin and yang. That's, that's how that works. <gasps> Oh Lord. <laughs> she got that well before it was me. So. But boo, I knew I knew something I was gonna be something between you and I. So I said, you, you know, you made it sound I'm gonna just go ahead and get this because I already know. How old is that tattoo? That don't matter. <laughs> but <See? laughs> I already knew. Like, come on now. I already knew. I knew this. It was in the works. I got you. God's plan. <laughs> all in God's plan right so in your own words what is black love what makes black love different from other types of love in this world black love um oh man one thing about black love is I aspire for it to actually like work it's something that I really want to see through you know what I'm saying? Black people as a whole have been like beat up so much to like that one thing love like as one thing we need to keep, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then, you know, you can actually make it work and it's uh, it's healthy. Mm. That's, that's everything, you know what I mean? So um, let it be unconditional and, you know, real. So, yeah. Yeah, I like that. What you got, mm-hmm. Shalom? Um, I feel like Black love can be, can, is uh, anything like, on the anything on the on the positive uh spectrum you know like patience we talked about that last time Mm -hmm. um with me and my patients like Tyler really tests my patients um (laughs) like 
but it's it's definitely in a good way, you know, because I already know like all right, Shalom, like it, it, you don't always have to, you know what I'm saying? But I feel like mm-hmm. I always have to, whatever it is. But um I feel like yeah, like definitely patience because you got so many, it's so many uh just people are so different in mm-hmm. Tyler and I. Like though we have a balance, we're so different. So especially with us, like right. patience. I like that. Um when I think about black love in general, I feel like um it's it's softness and strength. It's like that mixture of when it's good, it's like it's nurturing, but it builds you as well. So that's that kind of what you were speaking to with him challenging you in your relationship, but doing it in a way that you learn more about yourself in a healthy right. way. So it's like when black love is good oh man, there's nothing in this world that can touch it because you're becoming your best self through the connection with another person who wants the best for you as well. So yeah, nothing nothing compares. (laughs) However, there's often a talk of uh, like a battle of the sexes when it comes to like this idea of uh, connecting and Black love. Um, Where do you think that comes from in our community? Um. It has negative and positive sides, you know, um, the negative we all know, like, you know what I'm saying, putting pinning two people against each other, two opposing sexes, like, there's so much that's different about it, each other, like, you know what I'm saying, women and men, so it's kind of easy to just go ahead and pin us against each other, but in all honesty, I think we actually have more in common than address, like, so, in that way, it can actually, like, open up some of those doors and kind of see what what it's really all about. So Battle of the Sexes can be fun at times, but most people use it to like, you know what I'm saying? You're right. To spark some type of beef. To me, I like to use it for fun. You know what I'm saying? Like little games and, you know, things of that nature. But for the most part, we know how people use it. Mm-hmm. They pin each other against us. We got um, what a Ken and Samuels do. He do a lot oh, of that God. stuff. <laughs> man, like that bro, bro, bro be tripping, man. But I mean, a lot of the things he say is right, but the point he's making to try and get there is wrong. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's all that kind of mess, you know what I mean? It's easy to pin somebody against each other. I mean, the news is full of the blues, so nobody will watch it unless it was bad. <laughs> mm. What you got, Shalom? Um, just like Tyler said, like, it's like it started as a game, and then it just rose to, you know, nagging and poking at each other. Mm-hmm. So now, so now it's like, this is something like battle of the sexes like it's it's actually it's actually something you know what i'm saying right like started as a game and, and now we're here like it's literally <laughs> like battle of the sexes all the time all the time right because i do think there's a way to challenge um like the real lived experiences and grievances that we have within like the connections and the way that we fail each other um and i try to make sure my platform isn't too much far on one side right. you know yeah, I mean, I try to make sure i'm balanced yeah, yeah um, it can be done in a healthy way man mm-hmm. like why not like we both need to hear each other's point of view right. to kind of coexist in a healthy way um the easiest way to understand someone is to actually listen to do that you know like right. most of the time with battle of the sexes you just kind of want to get your point across and argue that instead of listening to the other side which I'm not doing a good job of because I just talked over you but yeah you look that's what conversation <laughs> is I never feel any type of way because that's what it, I don't want so such a structured conversation that it's just like okay I gotta finish all the way to this person like jump in like be excited about what we're talking about you know what I'm saying that's fine I don't I'm not one of those people that's like, oh my god he cut me off like, he talked over me <laughs> he mansplained <laughs> so um how can we be better because I find myself trying to figure out okay I do have a lot of emotions around like some of the things that I've experienced and some of the things that I see going on um how can I be honest about those things and challenge those things as well as still cultivate a, a safe space to connect in a real way and cultivate that black love I know that's right. You better use the verbiage, cultivate. All right. <laughs> but um, nah. He you, always you comes a- with the verbiage now. Yeah. You need the words though. for me. <laughs> you, re- you really answered it when you said um, truth. What do you do to have to reveal the truth? You have to communicate, whether mm-hmm. that be um, the emotion 
that you have to communicate it somewhere. You got to get it across. And uh, usually we do with, uh, well, we got all kinds of ways to do it. But um, the best part is just, you know what I'm saying? Communicate with each other, talking it out. I mean, if I you can like do that. You, you got to be, go you got to be true to, you know, first of all, uh, yourself and how you feeling about whatever it is. And then going into the communication because, damn, boo. You want to be out of smoke? <laughs> I'll bring it I think that look good. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like I was saying, you have to be true to, you know, what you're feeling and how you're feeling because if 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 sometimes, you know, I'll come to Tyler and I don't know how I'm feeling about whatever it is. Mm-hmm. It's like sometimes I want to convey to him so badly about what's going on or how I'm feeling and sometimes I can't because mm-hmm. I don't even know and I think correct me if I'm wrong Tyler I've literally said to him sometimes I don't know like I don't know how I'm feeling to even you know mm-hmm. try to get these words over to you so you you know before I th- Go ahead. if I if I can speak like I think like one thing that I'm understanding the more and more I deal with you know saying I'm, I'm, we're, we're together so one thing I'm understanding is that like you don't really have to know like there's some things that's unexplainable. It's just a feeling, mm-hmm. you know, and you know when it feels okay and you know when it doesn't. And it doesn't mm-hmm. always take words. That's why I was saying tie emotion into it because it might just be a simple touch. It might be, you know what I'm saying, any kind of gesture. It might be, let's go get something to eat. We don't even have to talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Like it don't always have to be a conversation. It's just communicate in some kind of way, right. whether it be emotionally, spiritually, physically, you know, verbally, but the, all the leads, mm-hmm. sexually. But anyway, um, communicate. <laughs> listen it's all right we we can touch there but (laughs) but and I I think I can say with me like I'm a thinker I think so much about everything I have to understand Mm -hmm. like if if I don't I I tell Tyler this all the time like it aggravates me you know when people when I if I tell you this or I'm trying to you know tell you something and it kind of irks me when people don't understand Oh yeah, being and, misunderstood and, is just uh, yeah. And then you know, even if you don't, just try to understand. Mm-hmm. Because if I don't understand, I'm gonna ask questions till I do. Mm-hmm. You know, well, why? Well, okay, well, well, what do you think? You know, something. So when I'm trying to convey something to him, and I un- definitely tie emotions into it, but it's like I want to understand where this is coming from. Mm-hmm whether I have emotions in it or not because like I said I'm a thinker mm-hmm. like my mind is going a mile a minute so it's just like I I need to understand something and when I don't you know it's frustrating right I think one of the most important things that I realized even just you know uh, listening to is communication only works when the other party is receptive and you yeah. being receptive parties for each other yeah. you can come and not be able to fully articulate okay I don't know what I'm experiencing I don't know what I'm feeling I'm, I know I'm frustrated I don't know why mm. you know you can have those moments and you have someone who's willing to try and understand even though you can't even articulate it mm-hmm. um I think the breakdown happens where you might have parties who want to communicate and who try to um but are you receptive to that communication you know even if it's imperfect you know so well you can listen to be understood and um listen to understand mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying so like a lot of that gets mixed up and tied up times you know what i'm saying like um for me it's like uh i try i try hard to you know at least receive what she's saying and then even if we agree to disagree we disagree a lot a lot so we still try to find common ground somewhere like, yo, like that ain't my thing, but you're your own person. Like we ain't got to agree on every single thing man, right. that coexists. Like that's impossible. Really. It's kind of crazy to even set that bar for yourself. You know, and that's, that's what a, that's a where lot the of people fail. Comes in. That's where the respect comes in. Yes. Because I mean, some, some people, they literally just coexist. Mm-hmm. Like they're just here. Dang, like happy. I don't care what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm what I said is what I said. Like, and that's just it. Whatever right. you feeling or what you know what I'm saying? Like, whatever you're feeling, I don't care it about. It doesn't matter. But it's it a value matter. issue too. It's like <clears throat> if you don't respect yeah. me, you probably don't value my opinions, you don't value my <clears throat> emotions, you don't value my communication. If oh, you right. don't value me, 
then how can we ever get to a place? What are we doing? Black love, like healthy what black are we love. Doing? What are we doing? You know, right. literally, I'll ask Tyler the most minuscule things. I'd be like, well, babe, you know, I I be asked, I like your opinions. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> like it, it's the most smallest thing. Yes. And then, you know, but it, it's practice for, you know, it's it's subconscious. What you what you put it down. <laughs> oh. It was the list for puppy. me. <laughs> you practice practicing on them skills. It's it's practice. <laughs> it's practice. Um, it's subconscious, Bruno. Drop it. It's subconscious, but it's practice for you know whenever I really do need his advice and and or opinion on something. So I I don't mind asking you know what well, babe what do you think about this and he'd be like oh my god okay he'd be oh, like <laughs> he'd be like oh, I don't know <laughs> that's such a male response <laughs> he'd be like I guess oh I'd that's like, fine that's good uh huh. <laughs> But I need, I need details. Like, so, but I asked you, so how are you gonna say in my face exactly? How are you gonna say you guess you don't know? But I, I'm, that's what I'd be like. Okay, he be, like, well, he be like, give some details. He be like, yeah, babe. I mean, man, she, I'd be like, she, okay. she, she can't stand the fact that I, I articulate and explain things so well, like on the mic and to other people. <laughs> and then when they come to her, I'd be like, man, it's whatever. Because really, to I'd me, like, it'd what? be whatever. And um, one thing that I had to like tell her is that um, I had to get over that because like. Um, at one point, you know what I'm saying? I ain't want to mess up nothing. Mm-hmm. Are you afraid to make mistakes? You're afraid to kind of open up and say the wrong thing, but you can't right. really be afraid, man. Like, like I said, you got to agree to disagree and you got to be able to like say the wrong thing at times and right. kind of get like, I think I'm right about everything. So if I don't have an mm-hmm. answer, it's because I'm afraid to be wrong. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I had to learn that in being wrong, you have an opportunity to learn what's right. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's a growing, growing mm-hmm. pains and um, a learning experience daily for me. Uh, this is I, a, it's a great <laughs> example of, of how I say all the time, like you can only heal and experience certain things with yourself, like self-love. Yes, <laughs> you know, I'm all for it. But there's a certain amount of learning you do when you're in connection with another person that you just simply cannot do on your own because the other right. person is going to challenge you even in their healthy expression of loving you. So like connecting it always, if you're doing it right, it's going to bring you more, I don't know, growth and more introspection that you can do and learn from about who you are as an individual in this couple or a throuple for some people or more. <laughs> I mean, hey, they, 20, they, 20. hey, a lot of that, a lot of that it's, is it's going a lot on of that going days. on. Hey, Monogamy ain't nothing ain't wrong for with it, you know. <laughs> Just saying, I'm trying to be inclusive. Right. <laughs> speak, speak to all. <laughs> right. Um. So, when did you first? I don't know. When did you first realize you loved your current partner? Mm, that's hard to answer because, like, I don't think we ever. I, I'm just speaking for both of us right now. When I say like, I don't think there was an actual moment. It's just kind of like something that builds up over time Mm -hmm. it was a bunch of good moments that just kept happening and even bad that made you realize damn I can actually make it through that shit like hmm, I must really really want this or it must be something else you know (laughs) (laughs) whatever but um (laughs) yeah it's it's just like it's one of the things that kind of grew it kind of grows on you, man. It ain't nothing that you just wake up one day and be like, oh, I love this person. I, I don't I don't function that way. Right. You know, you got to kind of prove that over time. And that's probably the perfect word for it, time. Time. Well, me. Cause she, knew, she knew right away. Oh, right. right. Away. Did you really? You know what I did. You know what I oh, did. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I love to see it. Healthy sexual expression. Put it on me. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. <laughs> But um, oh, nah, <laughs> boo. You know what I'm about to say. What's up? You know, so, um, I was so drunk out of my mind at Absalom, and like I just told, <laughs> I just told him like I, I love you. But oh, you know how yeah. uh, <laughs> I'd be drunk, either drunk or right in the hey, middle. Drunk, of the- <laughs> drunk don't listen, lie. Listen, listen. Drunk don't and, lie. 
And that's what I was about to say. Like, they really say that's liquid courage. Like, that's what I felt. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And and though I, maybe, I don't I don't remember, but maybe I think, I think I'm right. That was my first time saying it, but I, I, I really mm. felt that. Right. Because even afterwards, it wasn't like a conversation that needed to be had. Um, because why do we have to talk about this? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, if we, I love you, well, why you love me? Well, what I do to make you love me? You know right. what I'm saying? And though I may, I may ask those questions now, like, boo, you love me? Like, why? You know what I'm saying? Like, I, mm-hmm. I, I do ask those questions because sometimes we need some reassurance, but it didn't have to be a conversation. You know, mm-hmm. like we were watching uh, Insecure and Issa told, uh, oh boy, Daniel. Nathan. Nathan, oh, Nathan, Nathan. yeah. Nathan. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm about to say, what season are you? <laughs> Nathan, baby. <laughs> so, so Nathan that, you know, um, she loved him and she right. was like well you know we didn't even have to talk about it it shouldn't have to be you know spoken about like I told you I love you and if you feel the same you could say that shit whenever you're ready but this is how I'm feeling right when you say I love you do it for you because that's a true uh exp- mm-hmm. it's a true representation of what you already feel don't just expect yep. the other person to now don't just I'm not gonna drop it off and you gonna act like you ain't heard me now <laughs> right <laughs> now don't act different. like you didn't hear what I said <laughs> the full a little different <laughs> um one question i do want to ask is were you did you have to get over expressing yourself in that way for the first time was it scary for you like what were those emotions surrounding that first i love you mm, um what comes behind it mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying Pro- proving that over and over again or at least um the fear of losing it Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's it's a lot that comes behind those words, man. Like once you express that type of feeling to someone, what ties into it? Like what's next? Like, all right, we love each other. What are you going to do to prove that? Or how are you going to show me that you really do? Because anybody can say it. Right. Like that's the easiest part saying, I love you. All right. That's, is that the end? Like, nah, like how you going to prove that to me? How you going to show me? Mm-hmm. Like I should know you love me before you even have to say it really. Yeah. Like, like, it's and it's it's more so yeah everything Tyler said and and how can we keep this up Mm. you know what I'm saying like he and I we don't even we don't have I think I said we don't have a lot of date nights but when we do we do and I think in between those date nights you know us in our emotions with each other and loving upon each other like that makes up for that you know what I'm saying so it's it's just it's just more so like let's not get stagnant you know right. like we don't want to get we're young like we're we're so you know new still in our relationship like a relationship should always be new mm-hmm. I feel you know no matter how many whatever number you have in months or years you know it should always be new like don't get stagnant because mm-hmm. once it becomes stagnant and then you have to you know uh you have to you can't just pick up where you live you have to start over with things right so it's more so you know how can we keep this up you know what can we do let's do something different maintenance yeah. and making sure that you're continuously putting action behind the words because like you said ty and used to uh Shalom, like sometimes yes and i love you feels good but if you saying i love you i love you i love you and we ain't, it's no action behind it we're not mm-hmm. being intentional with each other with how we spend our time how we show up in each other's lives if that's not there then what is really that I love you saying right right Right. I agree so how do you set and maintain healthy boundaries as individuals in your relationship oh back to communication (laughs) you said it quick if if you don't know then you know what I'm saying like and everybody ain't gonna like make the right guess or assumption all the time. Mm. You know what I mean? I might be feeling something and she ain't, or she might be feeling something and I ain't. It happens often. But if you communicate that, you know what I'm saying? That's where you kind of get, like, you know what I'm saying? You, you feel each other out and you do it daily, really. Mm-hmm. Like, um, you got to communicate. And, and we don't always, you know what I'm saying? It's hit or miss, man. We don't always get it right. There's sometimes, you know, I don't feel like talking and sometimes she don't feel like talking. You gotta understand that really and um you know respect like, it. respect today those today um Tyler came in from work and I was like when he walked in I was like what's wrong he was mm-hmm. like nah. and I was like what's wrong 
I was like, what's wrong with you? And it got so annoying. <laughs> and then, so I, I walked I walked into the room and he's in the closet and I asked him something. He's like, all dull and nonchalant. And I'm like, what's wrong with you? He's like, I'm like, are you Shalom okay? Shalom, little firecracker. Like, <laughs> she, yeah. she is. She is. I'm like, what's wrong with you? He's like, nothing, but it bought to be. It bought to be. So I'm like, what you mean? You keep asking me that. I'm like, well, you coming in here looking like something wrong with you? I'm trying to figure out. I'm like, well, you ain't got to worry about me asking you that no more. You ain't got to worry about it no more. He like, what? I'm like, you, you, I said, you ain't got to worry about me asking you no more. And I'm like, oh, here we go. Here we go. Communication. Oh. Right. <laughs> You know what I'm saying, let me try and find the center again. So, what can I do? Let me walk right here and sit with her a while while she's cooking. You know what I mean? Let me let me find some peace. It was let's let's, it let's was, find some peace again because obviously there's a rift now. This communication. I walked in here after a long work day. We, we all case. we still we still communicated. <laughs> it was verbal yeah. and nonverbal because I like when I'm cooking. I like for him to sit in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Like I I just like for him to be there, and so he knew that. And in my head, I was like, watch this motherfucker going. I got the shower and go right there to the TV and just sit on the couch instead of just coming around here because he know I want him right here. But he came around there, so it is, it, you know, it made me feel a little better. And I was like, look at him. <laughs> and we be knowing, like, man, that, that, right. they don't know. But if you don't know, that's a problem because you ain't paying attention. Mm-hmm. Like, we be knowing, man. Like, I knew I knew I needed to, like, you know what I'm saying? I could sit around here, cut on the TV and and um try and find some peace within self. But I ain't by myself. So, like, you know what I mean? Let me go around here and make sure we together, like, we straight. Yes, that. Know? Yes, that. Call it out. <laughs> but, yeah, that, I mean, honestly, um, being able to even have those moments because every day ain't going to be sunny. Like, and so even when you have those ribs and sometimes the, the situation will be messy. Okay, I wasn't particularly right or wrong. This person wasn't particularly right or wrong. Who's going to be the person... It, that's going to get us to the other side of this rift. Are we going to give in to each other? Is our relationship worth us being the bigger people? Right. So right. being I, able to I put pride and ego aside. Yeah. I'm not easy to deal with. I think he and I uh, had this conversation or not a conversation, but we, he and I both said, I know I'm not easy to deal with. Like I know that 100%. But what makes you and feel like you're not easy to deal with? Because I mean, like all of this, what I'm saying Mm-hmm. You know how you can say some things, but but the act on it is not there. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes I lack the act of what mm-hmm. I'm saying. Like I know, you know, I need to like if I'm feeling some type of way, I I know I should let Tyler know how I'm feeling. I know I should go ahead and talk about it. I know I'm being an asshole right now and he ain't do nothing to me. But that's how I'm feeling right now. So I feel like sometimes just deal with it, you know, but is that is that right is that you know right for him that's mm-hmm. not fair to him is that fair to us so yeah I know sometimes I'm not I'm not easy to deal with but you know just like you said like it's how do we feel about the greater good like how do we feel about us so you know therefore we have to you know you got to check yourself mm-hmm. and just kind of lack of better words give in yes. sometimes give in to yeah. each other give in to like that's- you said the greater good the art of submission, mm-hmm. um, something both <laughs> both sides need to practice more. You know what I'm saying? Like we both two are uh, dominant forces on our own, so we clash a lot. You know, and somebody wants to take lead often, so you gotta take turns at times and understand when it's your turn, and you kind of gotta fall back and um submit and cater to feelings. Like um, we cater to a lot of things, but. You got to cater to people's feelings at some time, you know, if yes. you care. If you don't, then you can shit, do Take whatever it leave the fuck it, you right. want. Yeah, right. whatever the hell you want. But like when you actually care, you got to at some point you cater to those feelings, man. You got, all right, let me stay, take a step back from myself and see what they're going through. Listen to understand instead of understand. Like, you know what I'm saying? Talk to listen or talk right. to understand. Be understood. Mm. If I can get my down words together. Talk to be understood. Right. right. Well, listen you got to it. understand. You got this. Thank you. Look, I was Thank following. You. Thank you, baby. <laughs> um, but like what, what everything that you're saying, submission, taking that self out multiple times during that little segment, you both were saying for the greater good of the relationship. And one thing that I think is missing sometimes when we connect is we don't realize that 
your individualism is there, but you're also a couple. So you can't be an individual in such a way that you are neglecting the relationship and the us and the we, you know, in the hour it is there. And sometimes you're going to have to put self aside to say, hey, yeah, I feel some type of way or I don't quite understand or I don't feel like doing X, Y and Z. But if I know this is going to negatively impact this connection I have with this person, then sometimes the greater good comes first. Um, And I think the more we understand that as individuals, the better we will be at like connecting, like you have been saying, like, you know, during this this segment. Um, how do you set healthy boundaries around your relationship? Because I know for some of us, um, I know a lot of girlfriends might be asking questions about relationship stuff or like, I'm not trying to be funny because I, I know that's the thing, you know? I've always struggled nah, with how much do I tell my friends about the person that I'm with because I have this person's trust to consider. This person is like a friend, even though we are in a romantic connection. And then how much do I actually tell my friends? Because sometimes I might need that outlet. Um, how do you set those boundaries around your relationship in a healthy way? You want to go first or you want me to go first? <laughs> I feel like that was a little shady time. <laughs> it it might have been. Hey, I'm, I'm going to give her the opportunity to do I don't, so. Um, I don't talk to... <laughs> well, first off, I don't have a lot of friends. Um, and the people I do genuinely call my friends, um, like, in case you've been one of them, like, you and I have had a conversation. I'm sorry, I didn't know that I made friends. From, that <laughs> no, that, that came from here. Um, like I don't, I don't talk about my relationship much. Right. Um, and it's not that you know I feel like I'm so much better or we're so much better. It's just more so like, it's, it's nothing to talk about. You know, mm-hmm. like, um. You gotta you gotta figure out who you're like, adding into the equation. Yeah, I mean yeah. So and, and with that being said, so so when you and I were talking, like everything was coming from a, a great space mm-hmm. slash place. So if I'm talking to someone else, like I don't know what their motive is. Mm-hmm. I can call you my friend and that can be genuine, genuinely coming from me in my heart, but you don't know people's intention. Mm-hmm. you know like I mean I just I just keep everything to myself honestly and it's not even keep everything to myself because we're we're public you know what I'm saying like of course people see us but whatever we have going on and which is it's not much you know what I'm saying like we we just here we're loving each other like we're we're together we're making moves together like but is that other people's business right no nah, it's not more so like I'm being private but I mean it's literally our business you know it's your own little world and everybody can't get invited like yeah (laughs) Yeah, privacy is powerful man yeah you know what i'm saying it's it's i I like to like quote like when you're cooking like it's cool to have somebody there helping you but too many hands in the pot Mm. will mess up the mix always like somebody gonna somebody gonna forget the time frame that it was supposed to be cooked somebody gonna over season something you know what I'm saying? Like, it's going to happen. Like, sometimes adding too many people to the equation can mess up the mix, for real, for real. And um, you got to kind of be, like, organic about it. Like, when you introduce someone into your world and what y'all got going on, like, mm-hmm. like people people around, I'm so public till people know, like, when someone is a part of my life or something is going on. So I can't really um, avoid it. And not that I'm trying to, but it's something that's unavoidable when they speak on a certain person or a situation that I'm involved in, what I try to do is be as organic as possible and let it actually flow out and make sure that I'm comfortable with whatever I'm saying about this person. And you got to know your person. If you Mm -hmm. know that's something that's going to make them uncomfortable, then you should be uncomfortable with it as well. Like it's all about catering the feelings, man, at the end of the day. So Mm -hmm. you can allow other people in. It's just um, how much, you know what I'm saying? And, and know what, what place is coming from from you as well, because I think um, what happens a lot is we don't want to get back to a place where you could be in an unhealthy situation and you don't have that outside, um, I don't know, connection with your friends to say, hey, you, yeah, this ain't too great. <laughs> you know, you might need yeah, to yeah. get out 
or even uh, some kind of blind spots in your self-awareness where you can take a, a situation or something that's happened in your relationship and you present that to your friends in a healthy way and they can say, hey, um, yeah, you messing up. <laughs> you, right. you should have those you know people um that you can go to should you need that but it's <clears throat> also taken into consideration like you said that this other person you have their trust to consider you shouldn't be telling every single detail about your relationship every mm-hmm. single thing if that if your partner has told you a secret your best friend shouldn't be knowing <laughs> you know that's best friend that's great but you know that's that's a whole different kind of thing one thing I wanted to ask for you, Ty, like, do you have male friends that you can go to? Because I don't. I do. I, okay. I do. I do. Um, You know, like, I got a couple people that I trust with, you know, what I mean? my thoughts and uh, my life, really. You know, I got some good people around. Me. Um, And that comes from being good to them as well. Like, mm-hmm. you know, so there's things I can share. There's things I, I, you know what I'm saying? I tell them and I'm like, damn. Why did I even open up about, you know what I'm saying? And it's comfortability. Um, I think we both have outside sources. And like you said, it is healthy. It's something you need to, you need to have a strong support group around you. Mm -hmm. Um, Even, even outside the home. Um, A lot of us don't have that. Uh, I wouldn't say seek one, let that happen on its own time. You know what I'm saying? You can't force, you can't force nothing. (laughs) Nah, it's nothing that should be forced. Everything should flow, man. And and if you think you need to share something with somebody or you need some advice about something, reach out, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? There's things I want to talk about to her. And then I might ask somebody that I think might be, you know what I'm saying, knowledgeable of the situation or someone that I know is in a relationship. I'm like, hey, man, what'd you do about this, that, and the third? You know, I don't have every answer. And like I said, I hate being wrong. So there's things I ask of my male you know, companions and things like that, like, Hey man, what you do about that? And I think I got it all correct. Like, I, I ain't, half the time I don't even want to ask them questions, but it flows like it's something that you know what I'm saying just happens. Mm-hmm. It isn't anything that I plan or ain't no intentions behind it. It's just kind of problem solving. And you, know you hit I mean? on it. You hit on it. I think that's why. So the most of the people that let me see. I can literally count on one hand, like, you know, how many yeah. girlfriends, <laughs> girlfriends. I can count on one hand how many guys. And it's like, I just kind of analyze and I'm just like, I mean, of course it's okay to, 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 to open up about, you know, something, you mm-hmm. know, if you feel like it's a safe space, but the, the thinker, you know, I'm like, well, you know, how can, I open up about this, you know, uh, and wanting to talk about whatever and or get advice about something if, you know, they don't have it for themselves, Mm -hmm. you know? So it's just like, I'm going to still be, you know, thinking about this. It's it's, That'll probably annoy me. It will annoy me because I'm just like, dad, like, you know, I was anticipating something more, but I didn't get it. So now like the person didn't give good advice is what you're saying. Yeah. And and not mm-hmm. I don't want to say good advice because they can think oh I I, I gave Sean the you know my greatest you know I pulled that out but, but it, it didn't, didn't do, do it for you it didn't do anything for me so I literally mm-hmm. like Tyler knows this if I my grandma probably knows you know like just, whether she remembers or not just about everything right. like whether it's a question somebody you know. Because I just feel like, I mean, like she's been here, you know, mm-hmm. she, she, she done spend the block, you know, like a few times. So I can go to her and ask her if she don't know, she'll probably tell me to pray about it and move on. Mm-hmm. But other than that, nine times out of 10, like she going she gonna to give me something and whether it's either I'm going to take it or not. I love that. Um, going to the elders. <laughs> I mean, but like you said, like having those people like, it is always that thing where it's like, I don't expect you to necessarily be in a relationship, but I, I even had like a recent situation and everybody keeps telling me one piece of advice. I'm just like, I don't think <laughs> this is what I need right now. Yeah. You know, if I was on the other side of this, this is probably, you know, what I would say to actually help with the situation. But um, 
yeah, sometimes you realize, okay, yeah, I should have killed this in my right, right. <laughs> but I mean, um, as long as you have at least one person where you feel like if I really need like honest advice, I have that. My sister is that one person. If I need an honest truth and an accountability partner, uh, somebody that's going to look at the totality of the situation, um, not judge it. Cause some people you don't want to go to because you don't want them to look, start looking at your partner differently. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. I'm just like, if I tell you something and I forgive this person the next day, are you going to start treating them different? Cause we just yeah. had a riff. Like I just needed advice about this. And yes, I was upset, right. but I don't <laughs> starting to act crazy now so like don't don't be biased you know yeah. like you <laughs> yeah, we just had that conversation like you know like a lot of people go to social media for things and yeah. vent and um try and get the overall like statement or something from it mm-hmm. i don't i don't do it so i don't really know what they're trying to get but I, I, i'm sure they're searching for answers and fishing for something that they want to hear but um you know, for the most part, like, I don't, I don't know if that's healthy because what do you do if you don't stand firm on that? Right. What you just put out, the energy you just put out, like, mm-hmm. um, then you, then how do, you, how does that make you look, and um, how does that make you feel? Mm-hmm. And then I, I think it depends on, you know, who the person is and and mm-hmm. what they're using it for or what mm-hmm. they're, yeah, what they're, what they're, what are they doing this for? Like, um, Tyler made a post about writing down your feelings and thoughts, right? right? Keep a journal. And I said, well, boo, you don't keep no journal. And he was like, you know, he writes. And, you know, I said to him the other day about, it was a particular post that I read and I, and I told him about it and we had a conversation about it this particular um conversation i was just like well what's the point in going to social media you know because like tyler just said what do you what are you going to get out of this what do you want from it mm-hmm. do you want the likes the loves and the cares you know do you want people to actually comment and to say you know oh it'll get better um or are you really just typing this out you know do you really just want to do you just feel like writing you can't mm-hmm. you couldn't find a pen so you 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 know you want to type like it's so many different avenues to you know right. or, or thought process for that but me in particular I'm just like social media I don't get on Facebook I, I literally scroll but you know social media is it is literally just fun for me mm-hmm. you know yeah. and I don't get on there looking for anything or right. trying to find answers it's literally what it is it's for me to be social and just for me to have fun with it, I'm mostly on mm-hmm. Snap. And you follow me on Snap, like, you know, you see what I do on there. Right. The food, mostly at work. <laughs> like, but always at work. <laughs> but, right. <laughs> but it's like, you know, that's what I use it for. But sometimes I look at other people and I'm just like, well, what was your thought process behind yeah. this? You know? Like, Facebook is... <laughs> it's, it's overrated. It's, it's Facebook. But I think um, looking at how people use it and... and kind of having some empathy there for them social media is their diary and it's not Mm -hmm. one that we would choose but it's it's a method of expression that they've been using and they've gotten used to using I've been guilty of it honestly and it's not even been intentional guilt it's just like Mm -hmm. oh this is here and I need to express Mm -hmm. myself and this is what I you know used to do it um So I think, you know, just being intentional with how we express ourselves. And I think a lot of people just aren't intentional with a lot of things, including their emotional expression. And so they just let everything spill out in social Mm -hmm. media instead of actually taking a moment and being like, you know, do everybody deserve access to my business in this way? (laughs) Access to my partner's business? Yeah, you just got to, you got to kind of like just uh, grade on how healthy it is Mm -hmm. for you to do that or take that step because like I said I don't see anything wrong with it it's not something I practice often but um uh is it healthy you know is it beneficial towards the greater good and what you want to do with your life and how many people you want to allow in to what you're experiencing now if you're that type of person where kind of I want to put this out there and you know my life is an open book that don't mean everybody's going to translate Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying the right way or take what you're saying like I can read a book and I'll understand it one way and y'all two will read the same book and understand it a totally different way so like you gotta you gotta be conscious of how people are receiving you 
mm-hmm. at the same time. And then because you have once, to be ready for it. Yeah, right. once they address it. Yeah. You got to be ready for that. You got to well. be ready for it. Because you put that energy out there. You put it out there so you can't get upset if I comment and say, the fuck you put this That's up before? Oh, that would have fun. You know, who, right. You know, <laughs> so now you began. have, you know, now, you know, I have you saying, I'm a hater, I'm this, I'm that. No, I'm not. I just really want to know what the fuck you put this up here for because I ain't want to see that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, I can't help but to see it. Now I'm going to be nosy because it's a long ass fucking post. I'm going to read it <laughs> because longest. it looked interesting. You know, I ain't so, read the long post. I'm so, scrolling right away. I just, I oh, read man, that long look. post. I, I read it. I be reading. I did. <laughs> I did. I'm nosy. <laughs> nah, depending on, depending on who it is, who it I'm is, not going right, right. Yeah, nah. I'm like, they dude, always up there with that crazy right. mess. Like, girl, right. somebody else died. Like, they, they, oh, Lord. that crazy oh, Lord. girl outside again. <laughs> <laughs> that crazy bitch on Facebook again. But as, as a creative, that's something I'm exploring too because you don't think about it when you're creating and when you're sharing your creation, but it's a very intimate thing. It's very personal. It is emotional expression. So even yeah. when I'm sharing like these podcast episodes, my blog posts, like anything dealing with LBF or otherwise, that is me basically putting my emotional expression out on social media. And what I've realized I'm have to get prepared for is how people receive it because some yeah. people might interpret it and like it and, you know, feel good about it. And other people might feel like this girl get on my nerves, you know, like, I don't know. They and, might and that's okay. And that that's fine. Okay. Right. However, that's something I have to emotionally and mentally prepare for because the reality of it is social media is a no man's land. Like nobody mm-hmm. has claim over it. It's chaos. <laughs> like, right. You're going to utilize it as a tool. That doesn't necessarily mean that that's what everybody else is there for too. So Right. Just keeping that in mind with anything, including your relationship, including putting your business out online. Um, how do you reflect and hold yourself accountable when your partner points something out? I know we kind of touched on that, but um, I've been doing the accountability as my friend series here on LBF. And I talked about discernment and um, I talked about self-awareness. And what I feel is that a lot of times in connection, self-awareness kicks a lot of people's ass and it keeps it it kind of messes up the the relationship or word of connection is there because ego gets in the way blame gets in the way um how do you avoid those kind of pitfalls in your relationship Mm. common ground um you just gotta listen to each other really yeah i think i i think i can I think I can honestly say for us, like, we don't, we don't do the, um, we don't do the blaming. Like we, we're going to get our points across and whether we understand it or not, you know, like we said before, we're going to agree to disagree, but also like. To rebuttal, like, like, I don't know. We'll compare situations like <laughs> Bruno in trouble, but uh, we'll compare like situations at times, and sometimes that can be unhealthy mm-hmm. because you know. But it's it, for us, it's an art of communicating. Like, right? You know I'm saying then we'll call each other out on it. Now, all right, don't throw that in my face because of this that's going on now, because we were supposed to fix that back there. You know, what I'm saying ain't no reason bringing it up again mm-hmm. if if mm-hmm. it was actually fixed. So we, we find ourselves fixing things over and over again. So it's all about communicating, man, and going through those patches, like, for real, for real. It's a respect like thing. That. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a respect thing. I'm going to respect what you got to say um, instead of yeah. just being defensive right out the gate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll wait to be defensive anyway because I got to know what you're talking about. I got to understand it. Like we, some people are so quick to be defensive to you don't really understand what's going on. Like why, mm-hmm. why, what am I arguing or what am I debating? Because right. I haven't listened to you yet and I don't understand it. And sometimes I'm guilty of it. I'll, I'll say something out of, um, and going with that. Anyway, sometimes I'll say something too quick and um, you know, I realize, damn, I, I agree with you or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> Not having to uh, tuck your tail, right? Like, I thought like, about hey. it. I kind of do agree. <laughs> like, 
Like you said, hey. okay, you said the same thing I, I, I'm agreeing to, okay. Yeah, it happens, man. Like, you know. And I, and I oftentimes have to tell him, like, you know, let me finish because mm-hmm. he tries his best to finish all my thought processes and damn near all my sentences. So I'm like, if you let me finish, you know, because I wasn't going to say that. Or no, I wasn't even thinking that way. Like, this is what I was about to say. And then he's like, oh, okay. I see Us intellectual people <laughs> have a hard time in relationships with that. Very. Because <laughs> we, we, especially emotionally intelligent people and communicators, we will think that we are three, five, ten steps ahead. Oh, and man. so we'll yes. try to go ahead and be like, Everybody you know, I already got this. Checkers. Right. I'm playing, yeah, I'm playing chess. chess. <laughs> yeah, I'm playing I'm that saying. Chinese uh, whatever game. <laughs> there you go. Something. Them games you don't ever know how to play. Shit. Yeah, I don't. Little the, other, the, the other side of the checkerboard. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Sometimes we can be our own worst enemy. And like when you have two intelligent people together and, and, you know, emotionally intelligent people, a lot of times we get caught up in each other's, you know, smart assness. (laughs) (laughs) True. True. Um, How did you overcome your past traumas to build a healthy relationship? Specifically past relationship traumas. Wow. Um, um go ahead. Go ahead, man. <laughs> um okay, so again, um, we had a conversation. We were in the car and you know, we were just we were about to go shopping at TJ Maxx and uh, you know the conversation I don't think it just came about, but you know, it came about and he asked some questions, Tyler asked questions, and he was just like, you know, I don't even know if you're over, you know, um, over this and over that, or even tried to, you know, try to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Um, And I had to kind of think a little bit, and I was just like, I honestly don't know if I did deal with it or got over it. You know, I kind of just kept on through because initially, like, that's, really how I deal with things you know I kind of keep moving I have to try my best and just keep moving Mm -hmm. um like another past relationship like I went through hell and back you know I'm saying like just everything it's like I took hit at the hit at the hit at the hit and you have to realize that of course we all know people are different you know um everybody isn't going to come the same Mm -hmm. but you really have to realize that every body is different like it's it's really easier said than done because you really have to realize that everybody is different everybody doesn't have the same intention everybody's mindset is not the same everybody like literally is you know individually themselves you know so you have to kind of just take things for what it is until it's something Mm -hmm. and then going back to then you talk about it you know like look this is this is what happened and and I'm not rocking with I don't like that you know Mm -hmm. until until you really drill that shit into their head sometimes a lot I'm still drilling a little bit you know but and that's okay that's it's okay but you know um the patient really just have to Mm -hmm. yes you really just have to sometimes like be on cruise control and and be okay with like I hate being repetitive like oh my god I hate it so much but it's like I'm learning to live with it you know and it's not a bad thing but I'm just learning to live with being repetitive because (sighs) (laughs) but that's the (laughs) thing with us like Um, This new wave, like there's so many great things that come out of, you know, our self-love journeys and everything else. But when you're connecting with someone else, ego has to get pushed to the side. And there are going to be times where things are not going to be cut and dry perfect. Like you're going to have to repeat yourself sometimes. I already said, like, when it comes to big stuff, I'm not not repeating myself more than twice. I I tried this. I'm not doing it. Yeah. But I do have patience when it comes to okay, you, you've been triggered by something, you know, you can be triggered by something healthy I'm doing because you can't, you, you, whatever, 
you know happened in your past you might be feeling like this too good to be true I don't know you might be closing down because you're scared Mm -hmm. I can have patience with that because I understand I've been there before and I actually want this I want to build and I know this is going to take work for me to actually earn you because I do believe that there's the thing that you should have to work for things <laughs> you sure you're supposed to earn people's trust um so yeah like I don't know was, we have to push these ideas about what we are and what we're not going to do to the side when it comes to some stuff whenever we're talking about connecting because right. that will get in the way every time when it's just like oh I'm not doing this I'm not putting up with this I'm not I'm, gonna, mm-hmm. you know, I'm coming and I'm not going to be perfect. So what are you going to be putting up with? Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, then you're just setting yourself up in the relationship, the ship up for failure. Right. Mm-hmm. I agree fine. with everything. Well, I agree with everything I said. Like, um, For the most part, like when, it, when dealing with trauma, one thing it does is linger. It's a, uh, it's a, um, until you deal with it, it's an open wound. It isn't even a scar. Like it's an open wound. Mm-hmm. And um, you kind of got to notice when something triggers you and uh, a- allow it to, to actually happen and be fixed. Mm-hmm. You got to kind of heal from it at some point or like Shannon said, it's going to basically take its toll on the relationship and do exactly what it was set out to do. And that's caused trauma. Mm-hmm. It is a traumatic experience. So it's coming from a place of pain or hurt or, you know what I'm saying, discomfort. So if you don't address it, then you're going to continue to be walking around with open wounds, you know, <laughs> until you actually decide to try and, you know what I'm saying, mend it and let's fix this. And Real sometimes quick. it doesn't even take a conversation. Go ahead, though. Can you open the door and get Bruno taken up? <laughs> sure. <laughs> While he is taking out the baby. <laughs> um how do you balance showing up for your relationship um, in the midst of work, creating all the different kind of things that come with life? Because I know balance is one of the big things in relationships. I think everything we have going on is just as a whole for mm-hmm. real, because. And I love that. About, I was like, oh, so because y'all do everything. Like your <laughs> right. creativity is not just yours. It's ours, you know, mm-hmm. and. That's how y'all make like, time. And I, I think I don't I don't want to say that's how it should be. Because mm-hmm. nah, I mean you still sometimes you still wanna have something of your own, you know. But he helps me in so many ways that he doesn't realize, you know what I'm saying? So I definitely don't mind him being there. You know what I'm saying? Like even even when I feel like I'm doing so much of whatever. Mm-hmm like it's still peaceful for him to be there like with work if I'm if I'm talking crap about somebody like he's there you know if I'm feeling some type of way you know he's he's there um if I if I have more to talk about at home you know he's there to listen and vice versa you know like even you know when I do my pop-up shops like though he's helping you know uh physically it's just mentally like he's he's just there like I just feel like it just helps us to mesh everything together it right. just works so well right like it's not like a uh it's not a strain you know like and if even if he has something else going on like he makes sure that he has time for whatever it is like I think I don't I honestly don't think it's it hasn't been anything else like in our way of each each other like Mm -hmm. when it comes to being there for each other and that's so beautiful because you you're always at you know more than words or involved and invested from what I can see at least on the outside of the relationship you're both so invested in each other's lives that you make it a point to say this is the life we're creating together it's not just I have my thing and I have to go invest in you and then I'm left to to my devices you're both saying hey if this is important to you then I'm involved if this is important to you then I'm involved I'm going to support you just as much as you support me and we're balancing out all this juggling we doing between work and creativity by just simply showing up for each other like it's even to like Tyler he's made me part of um the camera crew 
Like I'm a part of the camera production team. Mm-hmm. What happened to this book, hosting? Book me, guys. Um, but like, okay, so with more than words, um, I always played around on the mic and like we'll get there about nine, nine thirty, and I'll go to the mic or have the mic and I'm singing. Mm-hmm. But of course, nobody's in there right now. It's just me, Tyler, TC, you know, just the the main people, or whatever. And then that got into literally almost not having anybody to host, mm-hmm. you know. So that's I think that's how that came abreast because I think one day he had nobody, and I was just like, you know, I'll do it. And he's like, nah, you're not, not for, you know, and then it just started. And then I, I liked it. Um, I'm really shy in front of people. Like a lot of people don't believe that, but I am. I'm the same. So I believe it. <laughs> yeah. Like I am. Um, and then even, even with, uh, when we first started conversing, um, we, we talked about it. Well, you mentioned it the other day, Tyler. Um, I used to take his camera from him. And just go around and snapping pictures, mm-hmm. like or you know, record um, whatever's going on in Absalom, you know. So it's like I just showed interest, and it wasn't to show interest because of whatever, you know. That's what I wanted to do, and then now, by if he has a video shoot or something, or just something, it could be anything. He's like, hey, babe, you know, you want to come? And sometimes I'm just like yay or nay but if if whenever i'm there right if whenever i'm there Mm -hmm. like he he definitely makes me feel apart she is though like in all honesty like um she got a good eye like she got some style about her so i utilize her strengths to kind of make something um you know what i'm saying like make it better like something that i lack she might bring into the picture Right. And I'm not afraid to actually like add that component at times. You know, you need a woman's point of view on things. There's a certain audience I'm trying to reach and she's a part of it. Mm. So of course I'm going to go to the source, <laughs> you know? Well, yeah, it works. It, it works, works for us. <laughs> so getting down to the last few questions, because I know you guys are tired, but <laughs> How do you continuously date each other? How do you keep that spark alive? <laughs> what I mean, with this laugh? <laughs> like, I don't think we, I don't think, I, well, I don't have an answer for that. I'm a random ass person. Like, I'm random as hell. So, I mean, it's just. Excitement, like you said. It's just being genuine and authentic with it because you know when I when I don't when I like okay like you said earlier like sometimes I come in or he comes in and I don't don't feel like being bothered you know but it's like but I'm here you know I'm I'm definitely still a part like I'm still a team player like I'm still in it you know and we're definitely in it to win it so it's nothing I can say that like you know do this and this and that it's just it just happens Mm -hmm. like when I booked you for creative pickings oh, man. you know I was just like when I saw you when I saw uh, your pictures I was like that's so ironic because I was just about to hit someone else up on Facebook about it mm. so I was like I don't even know I mean and, and not I, I'll still book her but it made me feel so much better because I was like yo I can I can just book K. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like it's like like keep it keep it right here. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, I'll still book her. Like and I was still looking at um more pictures of her things um because like she she does something. I I can't even remember. But either way, I was it was just random. Like it was just very very random. And I was like I know Tyler would like this. And then I got deeper, you know, when it, uh, even with the color schemes, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, because I knew what those colors meant for us, right. you know? So it's just random. Like, mm-hmm. I just randomly do things. We just randomly do things. Like, but you know, from that, that's where I kind of got picking from or creative pickings. Cause I, I was like, oh, I let her choose her color. Why don't I just make that a thing? <laughs> hey. Listen, so y'all actually helped me out with like the concept and everything with that. Okay. That's what's up. 
That's what's up. <clears throat> I think my answer is um is pretty much along the same lines. A lot of things are random, but um those random things are like you know what I'm saying, random acts of love to me. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? That's that's dating to me. Uh like I, like she just said, when I got here today, she was cooking, preparing a meal. To me, that's a date. You know what I'm saying? It might not feel like that to her, but to a man. So you catering to me, making sure I'm eating, you know what I'm saying? Doing all kind of stuff like that. She ain't had to do nothing. I could have got something. We could have got fast food or anything. I mean, what's today? Wednesday? Right. The middle of the week, and she cooking me a meal. Like, she done cook every day this week so far. To me, that's, you know what I'm saying, catering to me and it might be something she wants to do. It might make her feel good to do that. I, I don't know, but I know it makes me feel good. And um, to me, that's like dating. You know what I'm saying? Like communicating, mm-hmm. spending that time, doing little organic things like that. And then, you know what I'm saying? Of course, the other stuff's going to come in, planning things, making sure we, you know what I'm saying, go on a trip every now and then or do something or, or either just work on building each other together. You know what I'm saying? To me, that's dating each other over and over again, planning the future. Like, you know what I'm saying? Where are we going with this? Like, what are we going to do? That's mm-hmm. dating each other, planning stages, like right. anything like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, to me, that's how I feel when you say, like, that question you asked, how do y'all date each other over and over again? Um, It's kind of setting ourselves up to be together. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because if you aren't planning, then you really don't plan on being with each other. Really. Mm-hmm like it can like I I like going out you know and um being out in the public or whatever but like being here like home with Tyler like that's like that's like the most peaceful thing like on the weekends when we have nothing to do oh my god like I dread sometimes you know him having to leave and go work sometimes because I'm like dad I want to chill and lay up you know what I'm saying? Like I wanna I wanna watch TV and I wanna just like, you know, move his leg all over the bed because I'm trying to get my leg under him, you know? Like <laughs> I, I love stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like I love when I can just when I just when I know like I have him all to myself right now until he has to leave if if need be. Right. But like I like like I mean just to piggyback off a of title like a date can be anything a date is anything for us like because our feelings are in it like we like each we other we enjoy each other like mm. like we we like it <laughs> you know what I'm saying like it's it's not forced right like yeah, it's I'm, just I'm, I'm, it's just there I'm, it's just I'm, happening I'm happy being bored together like okay we might not be doing nothing but I'm not bored right you know what I'm like, saying so. Maybe this we is really make boring, each other laugh. Like, like we be in here cutting the food sometimes, like <laughs> like dead as like real tears, like laughing <laughs> at each other because sometimes we we write <laughs> some nut jobs, but you know that's it works for us. Mm-hmm. You know, like it it works, and like I said before, nothing's forced, right? And you're intentional mm-hmm. with your time, even if that's hey, we're gonna do nothing today. <laughs> This time Listen, is if, yours. We yes. if we don't have nothing else we have quality time mm. like we if we don't have nothing else we have that right okay okay closing out the episode we gotta ask what is your favorite black love song <laughs> man i got so many love songs that i listen to i'm an R&B he named kid. he named so many songs when we was going up, i was like Oh, okay. I like that. Okay. I mean, okay. Uh, you ain't gonna leave enough for me. <laughs> like, but I literally, um, I don't have a favorite nothing. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, I love them all. And so when I hear it, I'ma sing, you know, my heart out. Right. Like, so you're gonna see, you're gonna see, you know, my, my lungs coming out, you know, I, my valves coming I, out right. My baby, I know right. our favorite song though. What? It, it's ours though. What what is it? Hello. Hello. Oh. oh yeah, 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 yeah. I love that song. What's hello? Yeah, Erica Badu. By Erica oh, hello, Badu. hello. Hey, hello, hello. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> hello, hello. Hey, that, that, hello, that hello. like our little Boom, go ahead and sing it. Hey, hello, uh, go ahead. You Andre, go ahead. <laughs> no, I ain't about to mess up that verse. <laughs> <laughs> that boy was spitting. Oh, <laughs> I ain't about to do Andre like that. <laughs> nah. Boo, come on, come on. I'm gonna listen to that though. 
Uh, no, yeah, let me let me let me look up the lyrics right quick. I'm starting off. <laughs> These the uh the birds. Oh, the, the, we go. Ooh, we yeah, gonna let we gonna let we gonna let them handle it. Oh, I'm just put, uh, somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Favorite black love movie. Mm. Girl, I I watch anything like that got to do with love. I be sitting right there like. Hers the love basketball. Oh Lord. Okay. See, we love basketball. It's so I love, aggravating. I loved it. But at the same time, Quit, uh, Quit, Quincy, he went nothing. She did too much <laughs> for that man. Q, oh my God. Q was nothing at all. Like, I, like, Why y'all hey, say girl. that? Man, he was going through it. Oh, no. He, no, he wasn't going through like, nothing. Like, they was young. That's fine. On, but no, he, he, okay, he no, wasn't going through not, nothing. Not for you to be acting like that. <laughs> no, sir. Like, you, he really was doing a lot. And then she was hung up on him for, for five years. Oh my God! That lady ain't move on for five years. Then just but, have to listen. play her hard out and lose in a game of basketball. <laughs> to prove and then the love. song—it was the song for me. What was the song? I don't even. I can't. I, I can hear it. Man, I can hear it. A fool of me. Of me. <laughs> Tell me why. Yo. <laughs> I can yeah, see the tear that's... coming out right now. Like, bitch, you still playing this fucking game. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Actually, you... I just watched on Netflix um Really Love a couple weeks really ago. Really love. Really love. It is a beautiful black movie. I'm the girl. Hmm. I've been in love with like Love Jones since I was like seven. That's my love Jones. Seven. Like, I mean, Even though I it's knew stupid. It, it yeah. but it's true to how we, but it's we true. act when we're like younger yeah. and dumb and don't want to say how we feel. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Like I knew, that was my, I knew that was my vibe <laughs> I should have known that was gonna be my vibe when I grew up just poetic <laughs> for no reason <laughs> black I don't know what but um really love on uh Netflix gives you that same vibe and it's a really uh, good love story it's about you know trials and tribulations we watch it. it yes please watch it together it's such a good such a good movie really love what really time love. is it we gonna we gonna watch that tonight okay. that's a wine we got now. time Got, girl, and don't be fussing I, at I him because you're gonna at, at some points in that in the movie you're gonna you're gonna be looking at him like <laughs> no, she look, do that and that's me that's me because we watching something now nocturnal nights this was kabo what is that nocturnal animals oh like nocturnal that. animals girl i don't know yeah, that movie some sick. crazy mess <laughs> And the man cheating, the man come in, he didn't come, he come in talking about, uh, she talking about, why don't her, she talk, the wife said, why didn't you come to bed last night? He gonna say, because I didn't want to wake you. I look at her, I said, I wish you would, talking about you ain't want to fucking wake me. Okay. Like, your fucking... And then, uh, one night he didn't come home. Child, I said, he cheating, he cheating. And then she don't know, he cheating, she's stupid as hell. Girl couldn't find out he cheating. Hey Ty, mm. just just sit at a safe distance. <laughs> listen, <laughs> when that arm comes swinging around, <laughs> she know oh. she know better. <laughs> yeah, I do. I know she better. The one, though. the one hit a quitter. You oh, seen it? Here we go. <laughs> the little here we arms. Go. Here I we seen go. it, ain't it? <laughs> you ain't seen it, ain't it? I know. Not, not quick at all. Boy, please! Like, what? Nah, you see, do I need to uh, put a uh, domestic violence hotline number up here on the screen when I edit it? No, we promote we promote positive. Put it up there. Ty, if you in trouble, blink twice. Real, real. Nah, one time, right there. There you go. But, uh, nah, like put it up there because some people might need that, man. I'm yeah. glad um, yeah. I, I haven't had to experience that, but you know, that's one thing some people need. But Love Jones is my joint, man. You know, love songs is it for me. You can tell though. Like, look at look, look what I do. Honestly, and that's why I said I should have known I would always be this person. <laughs> why did yeah. I was seven in in love with that movie? What what's happening mm-hmm. there? Have y'all seen Beyond the Light? <laughs> oh Lord, no. I heard about that. What do you mean you heard, heard about, about it? About that, you know, I haven't <laughs> seen it. Why you said it like that though? No, it's not I mean, bad, just, ain't it? No, see that how, that's how he came in the house. Beyond, so me and my best friend, we were in our early twenties. <laughs> we were still in college, and her mom took us to see Beyond the Lights. When I tell y'all, we were so depressed coming out day because we mm. were just like, this ain't real. <laughs> Love oh, like that don't exist. We would listen. It's a it's a beautiful movie though. Yes, I would encourage okay. y'all to uh, watch that as well. 
All right. Last thing, what is the advice you would give to Black lovers everywhere? Um, if it's real, it's worth it. Mm-hmm. Like, keep at it, man. Fight for it. Um, it's something that that's being um, uh, pit, like like I said at the beginning of the episode, they pin us against each other, and they they black as a whole is being attacked. So we we kind of need love. Mm-hmm. So if you can actually have that, it's something that's to be uh, to be uh, I can't find the word right now, but you know, oh, held in high regards. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Fight for, fought for. It's something that you should strive to fight for. Yeah. Um. You gotta, you gotta love yourself first. Like you gotta, you gotta know. Um. It don't even matter like where you came from, because it's about where you going, right? So you know, love, love yourself first, because if you don't love yourself, you know how can you love somebody else? Uh And how can you show them how to love you? Exactly, because I mean, I don't. If I don't know myself, I can't, I can't, um, I can't, I can't fathom to you. You know, I can't convey this to you. So you got just, just love yourself first. And then, you know, if loving someone else comes, then let it come. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't even say, you know, fight it. You know, it's okay to have guards down. It's okay to have guards up. Like, don't let nobody, don't let nobody, let nobody (laughs) <laughs> tell you you know whether to have a guard up or down mm-hmm. you know do whatever's comfortable for you i like because what you at, said at the, at the end of the day like you still have yourself like yeah, yeah you got your your boyfriend your girlfriend your your wife your husband but if i mean if the, anything the center happen of the universe today, has to be okay exactly <laughs> Exactly. Everything else gonna fall apart. I promise you. If the center right. ain't okay, if the sun stop moving today, all the planets gonna fall. I promise you. So, like, yeah. like she said, love yourself. The thing is, learn how to love yourself, and then teach someone else how to. Mm-hmm. Simple as that. Learn yourself. Period. I feel like mm-hmm. a, a lot of what happened in this conversation is, you know, you saying that you reflected on some piece, or even when we were talking about triggers, you got to know your triggers, and how do you know your triggers mm-hmm. if you don't know yourself? Mm -hmm. um you gotta really show up as a self-aware person in any connection otherwise you're you're gonna have an experience but you're not gonna really know how to make the most out of that experience because you don't know what to do you don't know how to show up because you're not self-aware so I think that with self-love self-awareness and all that different kind of stuff like be an individual and maintain that individuality but understand that it's okay to also be a couple and to mm-hmm. as much if you as you're advocating for yourself and advocating for your boundaries, making sure that you're putting that same amount of energy on some level when it comes to connecting with someone else as well. And still oh, yeah. be willing and still be willing to learn your your partner mm. no matter no matter what. Because mm-hmm. I mean, so once okay, so I, I've learned myself, right? I love myself. Now is this is the time, and I'm loving someone else. If, like Tyler said, if, if he hadn't have known, you know, let me go in here and sit with her. You know, he knows that because for one, you know, I'll, I'll say, "Well, come in here and sit with me." And two, you know, it's it's just a, a that non-verbal communication. You know, those gestures. Yes. So you still have to be willing to learn your partner because mm-hmm. right. i mean consistently what are, what are we doing you know right like years down the line and, and you don't know i'm, I'm allergic to, to onions <laughs> <laughs> you know like it's it's, it's yes. small things like that can make this relationship strive so. right nothing's worse than realizing that the person that you've invested in didn't know you right so right. understanding <laughs> that as much as you need to constantly n- check in with yourself and learn more things about yourself your partner whenever you're in a relationship they have that responsibility too your partner is going to change they should change they should grow Mm -hmm. evolve you know um and adjust where that that needs to happen but if you're not paying attention like ty said earlier then you're going to miss that growth and you're never going to you're going to get to a point where that's where that growing apart comes into play because you're still stuck on who that person was five years ago and they've already changed Mm-hmm. And if you're not being intentional with how you're trying to learn your partner, you're going to miss it every time. Yeah. Thanks. 
Mm-mm-mm. Well, I did have um, a game that I was going to pull out and I couldn't find it. I, I got it packed up in some oh, of this stuff. But it was a <laughs> new game I had brought. Y'all have loved the, the Let's Talk tonight cards and i mm-hmm. found this other one it's called we're not strangers i think you both would love that game it's like 25 dollars okay. off amazon i'll screenshot it and send it to you shalom if y'all wanted to get it but um it's i think you know to have an improv suit in house um date night have some wine some hookah and y'all it's just it has like three levels to it three levels okay. like of questions so the first one is like perception the other one is like um something else but it gets like a little bit more difficult the questions get more challenging but it's to make you like ask your partner those questions and kind of like really be intimate and vulnerable with each other so I encourage everybody out there to purchase that I think it's a great game I've actually read a lot of those questions I was like oh I'm gonna sweat when somebody have to ask me some of these <laughs> <laughs> but um right now let's plug in all of your creative ventures and your businesses social media and we'll start with Miss Splash and Sexy up there Hey, you guys, it's your girl. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> okay, but um, like Kay said, um, I'm Shalone. I use, I've been using uh, Shalone Danisha um, with Splash and Sexy. Um, I started with bathing suits and now I've ventured out into clothes. Um, I do have my next event coming up uh, sometime in January if somebody makes the fire in hand, Tyler. Um, so yeah, um, you can follow me on IG and Snapchat at Shalone underscore Dinesha. That's S H A L O N E underscore D I N E S H A. And those bathing suits are fire. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Clothes are fire too, but I hadn't gotten around to the clothes because I've been hooked up on the bathing suits. <laughs> listen, listen, I'm ready. I need some of the spin the block. I got spin the block. <laughs> All right, Mr. Ty, Ty, dollar sign. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Um, what do I do? Poetry, videography, photography, uh, visual arts. Uh, some of everything. Man. Yeah, some of everything. Just um, check me out. You can follow me on Facebook, Ty Davis. Uh, Instagram, all social media handles, um, Mr. Tyler. And uh, yeah, that's about it, man. More than words, of course, the mm-hmm. brand. Um, we are, we right now we're promoting, uh, black love and just black people, period. And one thing that we're focused on is the little black book of poetry right now, mm-hmm. uh, written by Tanya Mormon. Y'all can check that out. It's an amazing read. Um, yeah, we're doing a lot. Uh, hopefully I'll work on my book and have it done sometime next year. We'll see. In the meantime, like me and Shalom putting together a little kickback. Uh, we don't have a date yet, but it's going to be at the poet's house. Uh, we'll drop a location for everybody, and, you know, bring the vibe tribe together. You can bring that game too. That would be dope. Oh, I would definitely be in the vicinity with the game if that's what you need. <laughs> right. Yes. Um, and you guys know me. I'm your host, Kay Antoinette. And you can follow me on Instagram at Kay Antoinette underscore the blogger. Follow the Let's Build Futures page at Let's underscore build underscore futures and visit Let's Build Futures dot com for blog posts, podcasts and LBF news and more. Um, be sure to visit YouTube and type in LBF podcast. You will get visual episodes and they are awesome because you can see all of our facial expressions. If you have any letters, any kind of comments, concerns, or topic suggestions, you can always hit me up at allthingslbf at gmail.com. And be sure to just follow, like, subscribe, and promote these conversations. I think these all conversations that, all that. are oh, yeah. great. I, uh, you know, I don't know. I feel like once I talk to other people about this stuff that they really get into it. So make sure you're taking these conversations to your friend groups, your partners, and have them with yourself most importantly. But until next time, I'm out. Thank the guests. Y'all did awesome. Thank you for sharing your relationship with us. <laughs> thank you thank you we guys. are more than grateful well till next time bye thank you